North Carolina Supreme Court has handed down several rulings that change the landscape of elections and voting rights in the state. Yeah, the high court in that state, as of November, flipped to a Republican majority, and then it threw out two previous rulings. One of those rulings had forbid redistricting maps that were excessively partisan and a voter ID law that was filled with racial bias. The court also decided that felons who are out of prison but still serving probation or parole do not have the right to vote. Reaction in the state is split along party lines. That's just wrong if you care about having a real choice at the ballot box and electing someone like me whose you know, job is to go to Washington to work with both sides. I think it's a great day for North Carolina. I think it's a great day for the rule of law. And I think it's a great day for North Carolina voters. Danielle Battaglia joins us now. She's a congressional correspondent for the News and Observer and the Charlotte Observer. Uh, the court recently got rid of January Mandering. Tell us a little bit about how the court flipping red uh, has resulted in this outcome. We kind of saw this coming for a little while. We had heard as soon as the court flipped from a Democratic majority to a Republican majority that we would see this flip happen or this change happen. So on Friday when the ruling came out, we were surprised by the timing that they were going to undo the rulings of their pre previous court, but we weren't surprised that it happened. We kind of had expected Republicans on this new Supreme Court to um, change the previous ruling. And that what does this mean for the maps? I mean, how are the maps going to actually change? Well, so right now we have a 7-7 seven, seven, um, majority minority on which isn't really majority minority, but we have got seven Republicans, seven Democrats in the congressional districts. And we are expecting to see at least 10 to 11 Republican districts on the congressional maps going forward. I also think with the state house and the state Senate, we're going to see a strong Republican um, uh, majority going forward. Criticism of gerrymandering uh, is often, uh, it comes down to politicians should not be able to choose their voters. Voters should choose their politicians. And so the voting base is not changing. Uh, it's the same, but you go from 7 7 to 10 uh, 7 or 10 4, or you did the numbers and I'm not good at math, but you know, I'm good at the politics part of it. It's an interesting shift. And I'm sure that voting rights advocates looking at that and then also looking at uh, the voter ID law that has been knocked back uh, are having things to say. What are they saying? I talked to a lot of people on Friday night, and um, I was really interested to hear from the North Carolina Democratic chairwoman. She was recently elected, and she said she she knows that they did this before when they had control of the um, legislature. They also gerrymandered the districts to give a Democrat power and uh, she thinks it's wrong no matter what, whether it's Democrats or Republicans being in power. She thinks that we need to go to an independent legislature or an uh, independent um, map maker to do this. Because obviously, when we have the independent map maker, we can get a 7 7 majority. We are a state that has um, ind our independent voters make up the majority of our voting class. And so it, the congressional districts are in line with what we're seeing there. As for, um, as for the Republicans, obviously this was a huge win for them. They're celebrating this win and they're hoping to get control of the all of the maps. So tell us where does the, because Tony mentioned the voter ID law, but what does it mean? Where does it stand now? It's a little in the air. So what they did Friday was they reversed their previous ruling that said that they that voter, voter ID was um, unconstitutional, that we couldn't use voter ID in the state. So. We're expecting to see voter ID be um, put back in place. In 2018, our voters had um, voted for that in a constitutional amendment, and then it went through the court system, and the Supreme Court had ruled that it was unconstitutional. So now we're expecting that to go back in place, and we will be using voter ID. But Democrats are saying they're going to fight all of these rulings um, through the federal court system. So I think we're still a, a little bit in limbo. There's also a couple of pending cases on that specific topic that are still out there. All right, Danielle Butaglia, a congressional correspondent for the News and Observer and also the Charlotte Observer, not one job, but two. And then she also joins us. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me.